Okay, so get ready because today we're diving into a story mm. and honestly, it's the kind of story that just makes you wonder you know, what's really out there. Right, and this one, this one's a classic. It's the kind of case that gets talked about for decades and for good reason. Exactly. It's the Cash Landrum incident. There you go. And it all starts in December 1980 in a place that most people probably wouldn't think of as a hotbed for, well, strange encounters. Mm. Huffman, Texas. Small town Texas. You got Small town Texas. Just a regular night. That's correct. We've got Betty Cash, Vicki Landrum, and her grandson, Colby, heading back home after a bingo game. Just trying to picture it, you know, that drive. Yeah, quiet night, probably some country music playing on the radio, streetlights kind of fading in the rear view. Yeah, exactly. It seems like the most normal thing in the world. Yeah. Until it isn't. And that's what gets me about this case. You know, it goes from ordinary to completely extraordinary in a blink. Well, and it's not like they just saw some blurry lights off in the distance either. Right. This is a close encounter. We're talking multiple witnesses, detailed descriptions, and the effects. They lingered. They really did. But let's back up a bit. Yeah, let's set the stage. So they're driving down this dark road when they spot a light in the sky. Happens all the time, right? Could be anything. Exactly. At first, they probably thought it was a star or maybe a plane. Mm -hmm. But this light, it starts to descend, and it just keeps getting bigger and brighter. And brighter. And here's where things get really, really interesting. See, they didn't describe a typical saucer shape. They said it was diamond-shaped. 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 Massive, too. Like, almost 90 feet across with what they described as flames shooting out the bottom. 90 feet? That's, that's huge. It's enormous. I mean, just imagine trying to wrap your head around seeing something that big with flames against the night sky. I mean, I can't even imagine. It boggles the mind. And what gets me is it wasn't just something they saw. They could feel it, too. That's right. Like, physically feel it. They describe this intense heat radiating from the craft, this mm. presence. And there's another detail that really sends chills down your spine. They reported seeing military helicopters circling the craft. Military helicopters. Military helicopters, like they were escorting it or something. See, that's what gets me. What were those helicopters doing there? Were they just observing? Or was this some kind of secret project, something they weren't supposed to see? Exactly. It's that question, that connection to something big or something we don't understand that keeps bringing people back to the Cash Landrum incident. It's a real head scratcher. I mean, seriously, it's like something you'd see in a movie. You know, <laughs> a giant glowing object in the sky, military helicopters flying around it. Who would believe it? And yet there you have it. Three witnesses all giving the same account, all those incredible details. And you know what? It gets even stranger, even a bit disturbing when you consider what happened afterwards. Yeah, because this wasn't just like a light show. Yeah. Right? They didn't just see something and then that was it. They went through something. Mm -hmm. Well, something that left a mark, you know, a real physical mark. Absolutely. It's one of the things that makes this case so compelling, so unsettling. So shortly after this encounter, Betty Cash and Vicki Landrum they start experiencing these really awful symptoms. I mean, we're talking severe burns, hair loss, just constant nausea. Horrible. That's a whole. It is. And Betty, who was closest to the craft, she got the worst of it. Vomiting, diarrhea, this incredible weakness that just wouldn't go away. It sounds like something out of a nightmare. It does, doesn't it? And these weren't just temporary things, you know. This went on for weeks. Just imagine trying to live your life like normal when you're dealing with those kinds of symptoms. It's just, I can't even imagine. To have a regular night out turn into this terrifying ordeal, it just makes you think, what if it had been me? And those symptoms, those really awful physical effects, they play into a lot of the theories about what the witnesses might have encountered. Some researchers have suggested that maybe what they experienced, it was the result of electromagnetic radiation. It's something you often hear about, you know, in connection with UFO sightings in those stories people tell. Yeah, I can see that. But okay, you've got these intense symptoms. It sounds like something almost like radiation sickness. So they were able to get medical help, right? Someone must have been able to figure out what was going on. Well, that's where things get complicated. They tried to get help, of course, went to doctors, reported the incident, even contacted the Air Force because who else are you going to call? Exactly right. Right. But instead of getting answers, getting help, they were met with this wall of, well, disbelief. Doctors were stumped. They couldn't explain the symptoms, couldn't figure out a cause. You'd think with something this bizarre, this intense, someone would have taken them seriously. You'd think so. And it's not like the official investigations provided any more clarity. So what did they say it was? 
If they didn't believe their story, I mean. Well, some officials suggested maybe they'd misidentified a weather balloon. Or, and this is where it gets almost insulting, they said maybe it was swamp gas. Swamp gas. Swamp gas. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never heard of swamp gas causing radiation burns and hair loss. Me neither. It just doesn't make sense. It's clear that whatever they experienced, it was beyond anything, well anything ordinary. Yeah. And it, it wasn't just a quick look-see by the authorities, was it? This went on for years. Oh, yeah. The Air Force, NASA, even the Department of Health and Human Services, they were all brought in at some point trying to, you know, get to the bottom of it. So with that many agencies involved, you figure someone would have found something, right? Some explanation, some answer. You'd think so, wouldn't you? But it's like hitting a brick wall. Years of investigations, report after report, and the official stance remained unexplained 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 and that lack of closure the way they were dismissed it just fueled their determination even more you know they knew what they'd experienced they weren't going to be quiet about it you know it's kind of like what we always find in these stories what's that it always comes down to someone's word like in this case their experience against well the government yeah you're right it does often feel that way doesn't it and in this case i mean they were up against a lot right Oh, absolutely. You've got to remember, they were ordinary people. They weren't scientists or pilots. They were just going about their lives. Exactly. And suddenly they're thrust into this extraordinary situation. It, exactly. And then when they try to talk about it to get some answers, it's like they hit a brick wall. It can be incredibly frustrating and more than a little intimidating. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So they decided to take a stand. And it was a bold move. I mean, to sue the U.S. government, that takes guts. I'm kidding. So or... 1982, they filed this lawsuit. And they're basically alleging that what they saw, that craft, it wasn't just some random UFO. It was part of a secret military project. Right. And that the government was responsible for what happened to them, for their suffering. They wanted acknowledgement. They wanted accountability. So this lawsuit, it must have dragged on for, what, years? I can't even imagine what that must have been like for them. It was a long and difficult road, no doubt about it. They're dealing with these ongoing health problems, the emotional toll of that night. And on top of that, they're caught up in this legal battle. It's hard enough to go through something like that, but then to have to fight for years just to be heard. It's heartbreaking. And tragically, Betty Cash, she passed away in 1998 before the case was resolved. She never received any compensation, never got that acknowledgement she was looking for. It's a reminder of the human cost of these mysteries. It's a tragedy. And it makes you wonder, what if she had gotten the help she needed, the recognition of what she went through? Yeah, it makes you think. But Vicki Landrum, she kept fighting. She did. She was determined to see it through for Betty, for herself, and maybe, just maybe, for the truth. So what happened? Did she ever find out what that craft was? Well, in 2011, after decades of legal wrangling, Vicki Landrum reached a settlement with the government. A settlement? But what does that mean? Did they admit fault? Did she finally get some answers? That's the thing about settlements. A lot of times the details are kept secret, you know, sealed. So we don't know exactly what happened. So we're left with more questions than answers. We are. It's frustrating, right? Some people think the settlement was basically an admission of guilt. Like the government knew more than they were letting on and wanted to make it go away. Others figure it was just a way to avoid a long, messy trial. Something that could have been embarrassing, you know, if certain information came out. So we're left to speculate. It really makes you think, though. What if they settled because they knew something they didn't want to reveal? What if there's more to this story than we know? It's definitely something to ponder. And that's what makes the Cash Landrum incident so fascinating, so enduring. It's like a puzzle with some pieces missing. We've got this strange craft, these bizarre medical symptoms, the military helicopters, and that mysterious settlement. It's got all the ingredients of a real-life X-File. It really does. And at the heart of it, you have these three people just trying to make sense of what they experienced. Yes. Whether it was a secret government project, an encounter with something truly unknown, or something else entirely, their story continues to resonate with people because it reminds us that there are still mysteries out there, things we don't understand. And it reminds us of how important it is to keep an open mind, to listen to people's experiences, even when they sound unbelievable, because sometimes... The truth really is stranger than fiction. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, someday, the missing pieces of the Cash Landrum puzzle will fall into place. It's a story that stays with you, leaves you wondering. And that's what makes it a perfect fit for the deep dive.